All right, this is Elder Young One. I'm uh, doing my little video response to the Eli Yah One brother and anybody else out there that think the Apocrypha is real, you are sadly mistaken. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief and quick to the point with this. Uh, I was talking to this brother and a couple other brothers on uh, a few other places. I'm not going to be saying who they are in these places and where we were. I'm not trying to expose nobody and all that garbage. I'm basically just making a response to this brother because, you know, he got my name coming out of his mouth, so I, I need to say something. So that's the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm basically showing his face right now and pointing this out because he's the one that made this video. Uh, Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus, but it's not. And I already made a video proving that it's not, and he disagrees, and that's fine. No, I don't have any problem with that. But uh, what I do have a problem with is if you go have my name coming out, you might at least be telling the truth. Uh, that that's that's gonna be anybody. Don't 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 have me looking like I'm lying, and and I don't know what I'm talking about. So let me uh, we're gonna deal with the whole Apocrypha thing and how it's a lie. But uh, yeah, I was talking to this brother, and. I tried to explain to this brother that there's no need for a son of God, Savior, Messiah, Yahweh, whatever you want to call him, to die for our sins. All right, we was told what to do back in uh, in the book of Deuteronomy. We was told to keep the covenant. That if we didn't keep the covenant, we would receive the curses of the covenant. We're still living on those curses right now because of what our forefathers did when they broke the covenant. Okay, in the midst of that time between there and present day, supposedly this Jesus or Yahweh or whatever you want to call him, supposedly came and died and supposedly freed us from the curses of the law, according to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, I believe it is. But, as you and I already know, we're still living in the curses right now. Go figure that. So apparently if there was a son of God that died for us, he did not redeem us from no curses. Because we're still living in the curses. That right there, a bell should have rung in your head right there. Or some flag should have went up or something. Somebody should have been like, now wait a minute. If this supposed son of God died for us, what did he die for us for? Okay, so I asked the brother. The brother told me that he died to save us from eternal fire. Well, that's not true because there is no eternal fire for us to uh, be saved from. That's all New Testament garbage, and I already proved that the New Testament is a lie. There's too many mistakes and discrepancies in the New Testament for it to be uh, believed, on, believed on. Because our Heavenly Father does not make mistakes. And if there's mistakes, then that's not of our Heavenly Father. He, he changes not. He said he changed not, and we can't, we can't uh, say he does. But yeah, I was talking to him. And the reason why I'm talking about our Lord of Conversation is because uh, he wants to try to use the Apocrypha as his his backup, as his uh his uh his little weapon, you know, you know when he get in the bind, he wants to throw uh Second Edges chapter seven verse twenty eight and twenty nine around like he's saying something, and he's not the only one to do it. A lot of these guys out here do it. They have an Apocrypha. They believe it's real, and. I could see how they could believe that because I believed uh, that the New Testament was real. I believe I believed I used to believe all of that stuff. Uh, there's still videos where I will even mention uh, uh, Savior or Messiah, Son of God, probably, because uh, I used to believe that just like uh, everybody else. Uh, I'm I'm still learning just like uh, everybody else is learning. I'm not perfect, but uh, I know better now. I know better than to believe in a Son of God, Savior or Messiah. I know better than to believe that the Apocrypha is real. It's uh it's BS, and hopefully when I get done proving these few uh facts that I found out about the apocrypha, when I actually read it from front to back, it's not a very long book. I read the whole thing. Uh, I don't remember everything I read, but it was just certain things that just popped out, stood out to me, and I wasn't the only one that saw it. Other people saw it and told me about it, and I went and I read it again, and sure enough, there it was, like a sore thumb. So I'll, I'll cover those things, the discrepancies and the problems in the apocrypha. But yeah, uh, I, I told him uh, either Edris is lying or either the prophets are lying. Which one? And uh, he says none of them are lying. But uh, 
somebody's got to be lying because the prophets don't even agree with uh, the apocryphal book. They never uh, spoke of it. Uh, no one ever uh, talked about it or, or quoted anything out of it. And I asked them what prophet said the Son of God is going to die for our sins. He gives me Second Edges, chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. I said, no, no, brother. I asked you what prophet said a son of God would die for our sins. He gives me 2 Edges, chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. I said, what prophet, chapter and verse, please, from the Tanakh or the Torah, you know, it, it, if Edges is truth, it should agree with the Hebrew writings. He says it does. I asked him where. He says, 2 Edges, chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. And I told him, I said, you know, Edges is not in the Tanakh uh, or the Torah, right? You know, I said it was in the Apocrypha. And I asked him, what, what prophet in the Tanakh said the Son of God would die for our sins? Or in the Torah, give me any a prophet somewhere, anywhere. I, I, use the whole Bible. So, um, he says white people took it out. Then he gives me 2nd Edges, chapter 7, verse 28, 29. And so I told him, according to Jeremiah, chapter uh, 31 and verse 34, he will forgive us of our sins without the shedding of blood. Yahoo is going to forgive us of our sins. It's not going to be no need for no blood to be shed. So there's no need for a son of God to die for anybody. And it's all a lie. And then he gives me Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 33. And I told him, verse 34, read that. And he's talking about the new covenant. Okay, cool. I said, uh, yeah, we're still in Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. And we're waiting for verse 5, which hasn't happened yet. So he gives me again, 2nd Edges chapter 7, verse 28, 29. And I said, but we all will be forgiven in the end. So there's no need for uh, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, or Messiah, or whatever. I even gave him Joel chapter 2, verse uh, 32. Whosoever call on the name of Yahoo shall be saved. So we don't need a Son of God to be saved. And he still gives me 2 Edges chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. Uh, I even... Uh, showed him where uh, it says that he will pardon all of our iniquities. Okay? So there's no need for us, Second Edges chapter 7, verse 28, 29. No need for no son of God to die for us. Uh, if so, why? You know, because, you know, Galatians 3 and 13, that didn't work. Okay? So uh, I even told him uh, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 8 even shows that we're going to be forgiven of all of our iniquities, all of our past sins, everything we've ever done. Yahoo is going to forgive us for what? And there's no need for a son of God for that. So, so since him and people like him wants to use the apocrypha to try to say that there is a son of God, there has to be some Messiah or Savior to shed their blood for our sins, even though we was told not to even do uh, human sacrifice, all right, in Leviticus. Can't think of the, the verse right now. But here's some uh, things I'm going to ask. Who wrote the Apocrypha? Some of y'all saying Baruch wrote it. Some of y'all saying Jeremiah wrote it. Some of y'all saying Josephus wrote it. Who wrote the Apocrypha? Because Baruch didn't write it. Jeremiah didn't write it because they were speaking Hebrew and writing in Hebrew. The Apocrypha is written in Greek. Now, they want to try to predate the Apocrypha to about 400 B.C., from between 400 B.C. to the time of the supposed Son of God. But if that's true, then that means that it would have been during the time of Nehemiah, who was a Hebrew, not Greek. And this was during the, during the time of... Uh, our taxes, the Persian era, and when Alexander the Great first comes on the scene, 
and none of these people anywhere recorded in history mentions no apocrypha at all they don't write any writings out of it they don't even quote anything that's in it all right so you got to think about that then you got to think about the fact that this supposed Jesus or Yahweh Shah, whatever you want to call him he never quotes from the apocrypha and I remember, I remember uh, hearing somebody talk about that because you know the supposed Son of God would always refer back to the to the uh, the Torah, the Tanakh, you know, the Old Testament, and would say, you know, as it is written, you know, different things like that. He, he would speak, uh, so saith the prophet, or, or or something like that. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt uh, Yahuwah thy God, or something like that. Uh, even uh, the apostles would uh, go always go back and quote what somebody said like Amos or Joel or something like that but they would never quote out of the Apocrypha why? because there was no Apocrypha in fact the first actual canonized Apocrypha in book form wasn't until 1500s yeah the 1500s somewhere in there that wasn't that long ago and there were other manuscripts before that, but there wasn't no apocryphal books until somewhere around about the 1500s. All right, and the the, uh, the the manuscripts uh was all Greek, every last one of them written in Greek. That right there should have threw up a red flag, you know. What Hebrews doing uh, uh carrying around a Greek book? All right, the, the word apocrypha is a Greek word. Now. Let's deal with let's let's dive into the apocrypha right quick. Let me throw these little nuggets out right quick, and then I'm gonna be done with it. All right. Uh, the command, and and I know some of y'all probably heard this. There is a command to use magic in the apocrypha. That's in Tobit. I wrote it down, chapter six, verses five through seven. Are we supposed to be using magic? You can go back and you can read it. In fact, I can pull it up right here on my laptop. I got the whole thing right here on my laptop. So we got that. We got uh, an angel giving uh, advice on how to use magic in the Apocrypha. Tell me what does that sound like? So we got that going on. And, uh, let me see, what was that? Hmm. But yeah, we got that going on. And that is in, uh, Tobit, chapter 5, verse 12. Then the angel lied in chapter 12, verse 15, he tells the truth. So, yeah, the angel is giving magic advice in uh, chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. My bad. That's that. That's the whole magic thing. Because, you know, the angel is, is telling them what to do. But then the angel lies in chapter, uh, in chapter uh, 5, verse 12. And then in chapter 12, verse 15, he tells the truth. All right. Then we got uh, where it talks about uh, being forgiven of sin by giving alms. Like you can pay to get your sins forgiven. You can give alms or gifts or whatever you want to call it to get your sins forgiven. Okay? I mean, what does that sound like? And that is in Tobit chapter 4 verse 11 and I think in chapter 12 verse 9. And of course, you got an angel being worshipped in Tobit, chapter 12, verse 12. And you know, the Bible speaks against that. The worship of angels and all of that. Alright, you got uh, money being offered for the sins of the dead. That's in 2 Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 43-45. You got uh, praise of the seed of Simon in Judith, chapter 9, verse 2. 
and Jacob had cursed them in Genesis chapter 49 verses 5 through 7. Then you got uh, Judas seeking the blessing of Yah on them in Judas chapter 9 verse 13. Also, this one really got me when I found this. Judas is supposed to be dead. That's in, uh, in uh, 152 B.C. That's in Maccabees chapter 9, verse 3. But writes a letter to Aristobulus in 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 10. And that's around 188 B.C. And this is beside the fact that Antiochus dies three different ways in two different places. And the scriptures for that, I think it's 1 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 18, and I think it's either verse 16 too, or either chapter 16. And then you got 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 16, and then you got 2 Maccabees uh, chapter 9. So we got we got so many discrepancies in the apocryphal book. I mean, just wide open, in your face contradictions and so how are you going to use second Edris chapter 7 verse 28 29 that doesn't mean anything because the apocrypha is jacked up it's jacked all the heck up anybody that really reads it and keep track of what's going on can see that so I'm sticking with Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 8 that's how we're going to be forgiven of our sins Without the need of some shed blood of a Messiah, Savior, Yahweh Shah, whoever you want to call him. So, the Apocrypha is a lie. It's a made up book. And I'm done with it. So, if you got an Apocrypha, you need to throw that thing in the garbage. Alright, this is uh, Tobit, chapter 6, uh, verse 5 through 7. Uh, starts over here. Well, you're going to see verse 5 right here. Read down there. Uh, it says, uh, So the young man did as the angel commanded him, and when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. Then they both went on their way till they drew near. Let me back up. You can see it all. I don't know if y'all can see all of that. It says, Drew near to uh, Egbante, how have you say that? Uh, verse 6. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarias, to what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? That's in verse uh, verse 6 right here. To what use is uh, the liver and the, the gall of the fish? And he says, uh, he said unto him, touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman. So they're going to burn it before the man and the woman. I guess like burning incense or whatever. That hoodoo voodoo stuff. And the party shall be no more vexed. That's what they're, they're telling you to do in the Apocrypha. Tobit chapter 6. Alright. That's what they're telling you to do. As for the gall... It is good to anoint a man that has whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. Now, does that, that sound like something that uh, we're supposed to be doing in the Apocrypha? All right, now we in uh, the Apocrypha in uh, Tobit or Tobias chapter 4, and we're going to start at uh, verse 6. And we're going to see something else stupid that's in the Apocrypha. I don't, I don't, I don't see how our people believe in this garbage. But uh, I'm, I'm going to read this. It's going to sound stupid as heck. I'm trying to behave myself. But I'm going to read this mess. For if that... This is verse 6 in chapter 4 of Tobit or Tobias, however you want to say it. For if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperously succeed to thee and to all them that live justly. That's, uh, that's right here. 
All right. Uh, give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious, neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Because that alms do deliver from death. Y'all hear that? The Apocrypha says if you give alms, you give money, it will deliver you from death. And suffereth not to come into darkness. You see that? Alms delivering from death. All right. Now we're in um, we're in the Apocrypha, Second Maccabees, chapter twelve, and we're gonna go down to all the way down to the bottom down here to verse forty. Three. We're going to start at verse 43. Let me try to keep this clean here. Verse 43. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 drachms of silver, that's money, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly. A sin offering. A sin offering. In that he was mindful of the resurrection. Mindful of the resurrection. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. Okay, uh, I don't know about y'all, but that don't sound right to me. What are you what are you giving money for that for? For the uh for to have that done. Okay. So I mean that don't that don't even make sense. You're giving money for the dead? Come on. And also, and that's verse forty five, and also in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly. It was an holy and good thought, whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead. He made a reconciliation for the dead. That they might be delivered from sin. So he is he is giving money, drachms of silver, so that the dead can be delivered from sin. Are y'all hearing this? This is in the apocryphal book. The apocryphal book that everybody wanna believe in, wanna try to say it's uh it's you know it's real. I mean, I don't see how, and, it, oh, there's a lot more, but I'm not going to have a little hour-long video. So, yeah, I'm not going to do it. So, to those of you trying to come at me and anybody else with some apocryphal book, come on, man, come on. The apocryphal, man, you need to throw that thing in the garbage.